This lecture is on ecological studies. So here is an example of an ecologic study, correlation between universal BCG vaccination policy and then uh, association with morbidity and mortality for COVID-19, published as a preprint. Basically, they've taken BCG vaccination policies across multiple countries from the World BCG Atlas, um, which my team uh, curates, and then COVID data from publicly available sources, and then they do a correlation analysis. Do countries that give BCG universally have lower rates of COVID uh, and COVID deaths than those that don't give BCG? And apparently um, there is a correlation here, as you can see, uh, countries that uh, uh, never had uh, universal BCG policy had um, much higher rates of COVID deaths compared to countries which normally give BCG um, to all uh, children. And these sorts of studies are very quick and easy to do. Apparently this uh, paper took the team a couple of days to put the data together and another day to, to push it out on a preprint. That's how easy it can be to do ecological correlation studies. Unfortunately, these ecological correlation, especially this one on BCG and similar BCG ecological correlation studies have multiple serious uh, flaws in them and they're nowhere close to being useful from a policymaking perspective. And this, uh, we have critiqued it in detail and you're welcome to, to look at it. And I would also encourage you to look at a skeptics guide to ecological studies um, that I published in the Forbes um, uh, media outlet. So in short, here is a critique of this BCG ecological correlation. There is something called an ecological fallacy. The correlation we see across countries on big picture cross country comparisons do not at all have to be true at the individual level. Secondly, we already know uh, COVID testing rates are highly variable across countries and it's quite low in many low and middle income countries. So just because you don't see a lot of COVID there doesn't mean there is no COVID, but people are simply not testing. Next, we also know the epidemic is simply not on the same um, time scale across countries. It started off in China, then it took off in, uh, in Europe. Now it's raging in, in North America. It's really taking off now in South America. Uh, Brazil, for example, is taking off in Asia, India, Pakistan, so on and so forth. So it is confusing to take compare different countries when they're not on the same timeline as far as this pandemic goes. And then there is something called confounding by age structure, right? Um, comparing uh, COVID deaths in Italy uh, to comparing COVID deaths in India are misleading because Italy is predominantly an older population, while India is predominantly a younger population. And we know age has a lot to do with COVID mor morbidity. So um, not adjusting for confounding or difficulty in adjusting for confounding is a big problem in these ecologic studies. There's also something called confounding by indication. In this instance, there is a good reason why BCG was given um, to, is given routinely to people in some countries. For example, India gives BCG because India is the world's highest TB burden country. Even within Canada, BCG is still given in pockets in the indigenous communities where there's a lot of tuberculosis transmission even today. So the decision to give BCG is not randomly taken. There are other factors that go along with that decision and that um, makes it uh, 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 challenging to compare countries. And, and there's something called collinearity. Countries that give BCG also give MMR vaccine, polio vaccine, and do many other things. They may have a higher uh, rate of malaria. There are too many extraneous factors that are mixed up with this BCG vaccination policy. And then we already know by now there are huge inconsistencies in this BCG theory. When the paper, this correlation study was published in March, as compared to um, what the reality is today, today we know there are huge COVID epidemics in India, Brazil, Peru, Russia, Iran, Pakistan, Mexico, Chile, and all these countries give BCG, but they're now dealing with a massive COVID problem. So there is too many uh, holes in this BCG story. And then biologically speaking, even for TB, BCG doesn't protect beyond childhood. 
We use it primarily as a vaccine to protect young children from severe forms of TB. And by the time somebody is an adult, BCG is pretty much useless as a vaccine for TB. So why would BCG given in childhood protect a 60 or a 70 year old person from COVID mortality? Makes no sense. So for all these reasons, and we've summarized this in detail in our, in our critique, we must be very careful about these correlation studies. So now we'll define what an ecological study is. Uh, it's a study where the unit of analysis are populations or aggregates or groups of people rather than individuals. So whenever we take big picture cross country data and we compare them, we are doing an ecologic study. The data set is not individual people. The data set is made up of individual units, or countries, districts, hospitals, schools, so on and so forth. So here is an example, 13 states, um, uh, um, I believe in the United States, where they looked at incidence rate of TB and looked at the incidence rate of AIDS. So each dot here is a state, right? So this is a state with a high incidence of AIDS. It's also a state with a high incidence of TB. Overall, when you look at it, looks like a very nice correlation, right? As the incidence of AIDS goes up, incidence rate of TB goes up. So these two diseases go hand in hand and that's very well proven um, in any number of uh, studies and there's a strong immunological reason why that is the case. So you could take these uh, plots, you could draw a regression line through them and you could generate something called a correlation coefficient R. In this case, it's an ecological correlation coefficient, right? So if the R is close to one, that's a very strong positive correlation. If the R is closer to zero, there is really no correlation between uh, the two variables being looked at. Here's another example, air pollution and case fatality in SARS in China, right? So they've looked at all these provinces, right? Beijing cities, and they've looked at the air pollution index or the air quality uh, index and uh, the fatality due to SARS and they've drawn a line through the, through the plot, through the dots showing that in general, uh, if you're living in a highly polluted city and if you had SARS, you're much more likely to die. And uh, there's a flood of these correlation studies during this COVID pandemic. Here is another example, in addition to BCG, for example, wherever the uh, vitamin D levels are low in countries, there you find uh, high rates, uh, low rates. Uh, so whenever vitamin D levels are high, you see lower rates of COVID mortality, um, hypothesizing that vitamin D may somehow protect people from uh, COVID. Again, a cross country um, ecological comparison might not at all be true for uh, individual level. And all the limitations that I um, gave for the BCG also applies to vitamin D in this situation. So then why do ecologic studies? Well, they're low cost. Often they use existing data sets. They're convenient, they're quick to do. Uh, and we know some measurements are difficult to do on individual people. They can only be measured in aggregate. Um, so for example, you can look at the air pollution uh, index for a whole country, right? You may not have individual people's exposure to air pollution, but you have it for the whole country. Or some um, um, variables are inherently group uh, based. For example, we can only talk about uh, GDP per capita for a country, right? But it doesn't quite have an individual level meaning. I don't have a GDP for myself, but there's a GDP for my country, for example. Um, and ecological effects are the main interest. We are explicitly interested in ecological effects and that, that's why we do ecologic studies. They are simple to analyze, as you can see, often a very simple regression correlation coefficient. Um, and they are really good for generating new hypothesis for further investigation or study. If all we want is to hypothesize that something could be correlated with something, then I think an ecological study is perfectly fine. But is it enough to start interventions? Absolutely not. Is it enough to change clinical practice? Absolutely not. Should countries use them for policy decisions? No, because we need individual level stronger study designs than ecological studies.
and like I said, you can get aggregate measures uh, for the whole country, for the whole district, or uh, for the entire population. And that's basically what we end up using in these um, ecological studies. For example, you could look at uh, incidence of lung cancer across countries and uh, the number of cigarettes sold in each country, and then look to see whether lung cancer incidence is higher in countries where cigarette uh, sales are highest. But ecological studies have a large number of limitations. So as I mentioned, uh, they are fine only for generating a hypothesis. It's really hard to make any causal statements on the basis of ecological studies. Um, secondly, often ecological studies use existing databases, which are full of missing data. They may not be complete. Uh, and, and data may not be quite recorded at the group level. We have to often uh, construct the data to make it work. Um, confounding is very hard to adjust for because all the confounders we care about may not be available in the data set. Collinearity is an issue. So if you say BCG, then BCG also goes hand in hand with MMR vaccine and polio vaccine. You can't quite tell what's happening. There's also temporal ambiguity. You cannot tell in an ecological study which came first, right? There's no clear time sequence in an ecological study. And then there's something called ecological fallacy, which I've already hinted uh, earlier, which I'll explain in a second. So, you know, here is an example of the challenge of temporal sequence. So you have, uh, you know, a, a proportion um, in a population reporting current smoking, right? In all these uh, countries, for example. And then you have prevalence of any anxiety disorder, right? And they look like, smoking and anxiety disorder are uh, correlated, right? The, the regression line looks fairly uh, good. But then how do we know which came first? Is it because people are anxious that they're smoking? Or is it because people are smoking that they have an anxiety disorder afterwards? We can never tell from, a, from an ecological correlation because there's no clear time sequencing here. And then in terms of an ecological fallacy, there are many, many examples, but this is a very famous case study, uh, which we have also written up um, in, in our uh, bias files. Uh, it's called the Durkheim's bias. Um, Emile Durkheim is a very famous French sociologist, and he wrote a uh, groundbreaking a book called Les Suicides in uh, 1897, where uh, he looked at a whole bunch of uh, countries in, uh, in Europe, and he generally saw a trend that suicide rates were higher in countries that had fairly large number of Protestants. So he said, okay, then uh, being a Protestant um, is, uh, is a risk factor for committing uh, suicide, right? And then the reverse, he thought, made sense. That if you are a Catholic, then there is something about the Catholic uh, culture, their way of living, their beliefs, or their tight social bonds, which reduces in lower rates of suicide, right? But turned out later on, the opposite was true, right? Uh, it was predominantly, primarily Catholics um, who were committing suicide because they were living in mostly Protestant provinces, right? Uh, so Catholics here were a small minority in an otherwise Protestant dominant country and they uh, seem to have been committing suicide at a higher rate than um, uh, Protestants. So this uh, became a very famous example of ecological fallacy. The correlation we see at the group level might not at all hold at the individual level or might be the opposite um, of what we find at the, at the group level. Confound, confounding is very hard to adjust for in, uh, in uh, any ecological study. Uh, for example, we already saw in the BCG COVID uh, ecological studies, uh, there's a huge difference across countries in terms of the age, uh, population age pyramid, other vaccines given, variability in, in testing uh, rates, um, variability in healthcare uh, access, so on and so forth. And we often don't have good data to adjust for confounding. And even if you are just for confounding at the group level, at the country level, it might still be an issue at the individual level, right? So adjustment at the country level does not guarantee that the association at the individual level is deconfounded, right? So it's a uh, concern. 
And then there's something called aggregation bias. It kind of is related to this whole um, ecological fallacy argument. So for example, here is an exposure, right? Whatever it is, smoking, here is an outcome. And you find that within a given country, for example, there might be a, a negative correlation, right? Uh, greater the exposure, lower the odds of uh, the outcome, right? So you may say um, within individual countries, you find an inverse correlation between the exposure and the outcome. But then when you look at it across countries, across these four clusters, you see generally as exposure goes up, the rates of outcome go up. So the association at the individual level, which is a blue line, is the opposite of what we are seeing at the group level, right? And that's exactly what um, ecological fallacy and the Durkheim's bias is all about. Um, that when we look aggregate across countries, we see patterns that are not quite real. What we need to focus is the pattern within countries, within individual data sets. So in uh, summary, um, here are the key issues with all ecological studies. Um, ecological studies inherently work with aggregate group level or country level data. Uh, they look for associations between one variable and another. The unit of analysis is usually not individuals, but clusters or groups. They're great for generating hypotheses, but they're very prone to this problem of ecological fallacy. What we find correlated at the country level or the group level might not hold, might be the opposite of what we find at the individual level. And most ecological studies uh, have missing data, incomplete data, and cannot quite adjust for uh, confounding because we may not have data, good data on all covariates that we want to do. So um, it's fine to generate a hypothesis and then test it out in a much stronger study design, which is what how most epidemiologists think about it, that it's a useful um, design. It's a quick, inexpensive way of doing things, but we would not rely on an ecological study to make any serious causal inference, nor make clinical or uh, public health decisions, but we will uh, use it to investigate uh, an interesting correlation and then, then do much stronger studies afterwards uh, with, for example, with a cohort study as a follow-up to this, then it would make a lot of sense. Thank you.